How you doing? Well, in this video, we're going to look at uh, an optimization problem. And the problem that we have here is we're, we're going to mail a package. We're going to mail a package via the U.S. Postal Service. But they, they stipulate that, that the girth of this package, in other words, the perimeter around this, this box, uh, plus the length of the box, can, can be no more than 108 inches. Okay, with that stipulation, what are the dimensions of this thing that maximize the volume. In other words, we want to fit as most the, the most amount of stuff in there as possible. Well, to give us a better visual aid, I've went ahead and, and constructed a, a picture of this. And what you need to know is all these numbers are actually a scaled down version of, of what we're actually going to be doing. Um, I've gone ahead and I've I've made it so that the girth, the perimeter of this box, which is just the girth, plus the length, here it is right here, y, the length plus the girth, is equal to a constant. And this constant in this picture is 15. Now the constant in the actual problem is 108, but 108 was too big for this program. The picture would have been way too large and wouldn't have fit. Uh, so this number is a constant. These numbers can change though. Uh, notice that I also have the volume right here, and this number is going to change as the dimensions of this box change. So let's put this in motion and see what happens. As I change this, the the dimensions of this box make it really long and skinny okay you can see what happens uh, this isn't moving but you can see that that the volume is very small okay you couldn't fit too much water in this package um, I don't know why you'd want to mail water to anybody but uh, I like to think of volume as how much water you can fill an object with okay if I let it grow a little bit you can see the volume growing and it grows until about right right there ish and then if we go further, it starts to get small again. So our maximum volume is going to occur somewhere in here. Okay, so that's that's the picture of what's happening. Now let's go ahead and, and see if we can use some calculus to actually find this, the dimensions of this box that uh, maximize that volume. Well, whenever I'm doing a, an optimization problem, I like to think of an equation that describes the thing I want to maximize. So we're maximizing. We're maximizing volume okay so what's the equation for volume well it's the area of the base of my object multiplied by the length of my object or the the height however you want to think of it well the problem with this is that there's too many variables uh, the V is okay and one of these is okay but both of them are not I need to eliminate one and try to write one in terms of the other well uh, to our rescue comes a second equation and the second equation involves the girth and the girth is simply 4 times x. The girth, remember, is simply the perimeter uh, around the box. It's 4x plus the length of the box. We want that to equal 108. Okay, now it could it could be less. It could, this, this figure actually could be less, but remember we're interested in maximizing the volume, so if we don't take the post up a post office up on on the full 108 inches we're kind of ripping our own selves off a little bit okay so if I solve this for y then I get 108 minus 4x okay and now what I can do is I can make a substitution into my primary function my main function that I that I eventually want to maximize okay so what does that give me that gives me x squared times 108 minus 4x and there you go alright now what we want to do is we want to differentiate this thing and before I differentiate it I'm actually going to simplify it a little bit I always like to do this uh, because I don't like to I don't I don't want to make my derivative harder to get than it has to be so I I do a little bit of algebra work to save me a lot of algebra work if I if I wait till the end to do it so here we go you can see this is a cubic equation and think about what a cubic equation is now I'm I'm not in any way shape or form saying that this is what this thing looks like but we know cubics do things like this don't they um, at least if the leading coefficient is negative which it is here um, so it's gonna be doing something like this when we differentiate this thing, when I look for dv dx, okay, and then I set it equal to zero, what am I really doing? I'm saying, where are all the points on this curve 
that have a tangent line of 0. And the one I'm interested in is this guy right here. I want to know what value of x, what value of x is this, such that that, that, that horizontal tangent line, or excuse me, that that tangent line is horizontal. Um, that's really kind of what we're doing. Don't worry about this guy over here. He's, he's kind of outside of our domain. It doesn't make sense to, to have a negative x, so we won't even worry about him. Uh, and again, this, this picture isn't exactly this, but hopefully the idea is there. Okay, so uh, let's differentiate this. 216x minus 12x squared is our derivative. Now we set it equal to 0. And at the same time, I'm going to factor a 4x out of this. And I'm left with 54 minus 3x squared. Or, no, uh, sorry. Uh, minus what? Minus, well, that's too big. I guess I could have just, there, control Z works a whole lot better. Okay, uh, just 3x, there we go. Okay, now remember what we're doing. We're, we're, we're saying what values of x make my derivative 0, or what value of x gives me a horizontal tangent line. And, and since this curve represents volume, this peak right here is going to be the, the, the most volume that that equation is going to give me. And, and, and that's going to happen right here at this x. So let's go ahead and, and solve this. And you'll notice that we actually have two critical points. The first critical point comes from setting that equal to 0. And we get x equals 0. And the other critical point comes from setting this equal to 0. And if we do that, we get uh, not 2. Sorry, we get 18. 54 divided by negative 3 is 18. Okay, well, the, the trained calculus student will notice that, that we can go ahead and ignore. We could ignore this guy. That's probably going to be like this guy right here. We don't really care about him. Um, you know, having a zero, having a zero x wouldn't be much of a package, would it? So we kind of ignore him, and we assume, well, not assume, but we suspect that 18 is going to do our maximizing for us. This is, this is going to be most likely... 18 right here where we have this horizontal tangent line. Okay, but how can we be sure? How can we be sure that this is really uh, a maximum and m maybe it's a minimum? Who knows? Maybe this maybe this 18 maybe it does something like that instead or maybe it's a maybe it's an inflection point where where you still have a a zero slope. We don't know. So how do we how do we test that? Well, in walks are our second derivative so I'm just going to perform the, the second derivative test on this thing. And you can say you can say V double prime if you want. I'll just change notation on you midstream. Uh, and the second derivative is going to be 216 minus 24x. Okay, and our second derivative test says go ahead and evaluate your second derivative at that critical point. And it turns out we don't even care what the number is. All we care about is if it's positive or negative. And it turns out if you plug 18 into here, you get a negative number. I don't even care what it is. It's negative. Well, what does that mean if it's negative? If it's negative, that means you're concave down. And if you're concave down, that means that this point right here is a maximum. Okay, so we've concluded beyond a reasonable doubt that this really does maximize our volume. So the dimensions of our box, x is equal to 18. And what is y equal? How are we going to get y? Well, we scroll back up, and we use our secondary equation right here, and we plug 18 in for x. 108 minus 4 times 18 uh, should, be, should be 36. Now, I don't know if this is inches, centimeters, feet. I don't know what, what the dimension is. We'll just throw inches on there. We didn't, we didn't stipulate it. I guess from the beginning, or did we? I can't remember. Um, I guess it is inches, so uh, we've done this correctly. So there you go. Those are the dimensions of the box that maximize your volume. I hope that made sense to you. We'll see you around.